riding boat warrior uh, here this evening. But the captain for the rest of the uh, Rainbow Warrior on its Australian tour, uh, Captain Pete Wilcox. Now Pete has been with Greenpeace for many years indeed, and Pete was actually the captain of the first Rainbow Warrior on the night when it was bombed in Auckland Harbour in 1985, killing photographer Fernando Pereira. Uh, so, as I say, in a moment I'm going to invite uh, Pete to say a few words, but just two bits of housekeeping first. Uh, one is that for those who haven't yet had a tour of the Rainbow Warrior, there will be a, a final tour run as soon as we finish the, uh, the speeches and video, and, and none of that will take too long, don't worry. Um, and the second thing is that at some point this evening, a ship by the name of the Margiris, the super trawler that you may have heard about last year, that Greenpeace, along with its friends and allies, made clear was not welcome plundering Australian waters, and which has now been sent packing by the federal government because the Australian people spoke on the issue, will be steaming off in the background, because by happy symmetry, tonight is the night when it leaves Australian waters for good. And just to make sure that it does, we've sent a few inflatables out to just wave it on its way. So. Um, but now please uh, uh, join me in making welcome Captain Pete Wilcox back to Australia. Thank you, David. Um, welcome. I hope you all enjoyed the tour tonight. Uh, as David said, I've been working for Greenpeace for 32 years and doing environmental stuff for close to 40. Uh, and I know when I started, I had the, I guess, young man's, I thought that this would be a pretty easy battle to win. Uh, I cut my teeth in the civil rights movement in the United States, which, relatively speaking, got some results pretty fast. Um, and I thought, geez, five or ten years, we'll have the environment cleaned up and I'll move on to something else. <laughs> so it's really a shock now to find out that we're literally fighting for the lives of our children. And um, uh, I guess this really hit me, I don't know, three, four years ago, is the uh, evidence of climate change and what it's doing to all of us became more and more apparent. One of the most amazing trips I made with Greenpeace was about was it 2009, we went up to Greenland and saw where some of the glaciers over a time of a one-year span had increased their movement rate, which really is, if you think about glaciers as cold water flowing down into the ocean, they had increased their movement by 10 times. And scientists told us that first they thought they'd made a mistake, and then they went back and checked their figures. And some of the, I mean, anyway, it, it, just amazing stuff. Uh, we had an enormous drought in our U.S. bread basket last year, which affected prices of food all over the world. We've had storms. You've had droughts. I think we all know what's happening. And which is why, for me, it's so easy and, and I think, it, it motivating to come down and try to say something about the proposal to drill, to mine more coal in Australia. When Every scientist tells us that every liter of fuel we burn, every pound of coal we burn, is going to make climate change significantly more worse. And we're getting so close to the so-called tipping point where we're really going to dig ourselves a hole that we can't get out of. Uh, and in some ways it's frustrating being in this business because it seems like we're having absolutely no impact on our decision makers. Our president in the United States still thinks it's a good idea to go open up areas of the Alaskan wilderness to drill for more oil. To me, it's just bizarre. Uh, and yeah, I've got a 17-year-old uh, and a 21-year-old daughter, and I'm really nervous for their future, without a question. I mean, I think man has the ability to do such amazing things, but at the same, at the same time, we can just be so stupid, and that's what we're doing now. So, thanks for coming down on that joyful note. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just looking, 
looking forward to the next couple of months of going up the Australian coast and seeing much more of it than I ever have before. Uh, we're always moving on to different things on the ships. We, we get a little bit of everything. Our last trip was across the Indian Ocean where we were doing fisheries research. And again, it's just amazing to me to see us treat the oceans like a one-year wonder and not treat them like a farmer who would wants to hand down his land to his son and his daughters. That's not how we treat the oceans at all. And that's why it's so great that the super trawler is leaving Australia tonight. I firmly believe that we need to treat the oceans as if we wanted them to be around for another 100 years. And if we're really interested in removing the most protein from them, we need to back off, let them recover, and then fish in ways that make sense. Not fish in ways where you have massive bycatch, or where you fish out a whole species, or where you just are only concerned with paying off your investors another dividend. That's not the way we can afford to treat the planet. And I think that really does about say it. So thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the evening.